Episode what, 14 or 15? <laughs> we are in the house. Thank you for watching The Option. This is optionvolleyball.com. I'm Jason DeBeas and Daddy is home. But who's in the house today along with Miranda? That's my tech girl, my original tech girl. Say what's up. Hello. There she is. <laughs> there she is. But very special treat for you guys. You asked and you deserve and now you got because I've got to give the people, give the people what they want. Duran, what's up? <laughs> I like the special effects, Jason. <laughs> Oh, Duran, hey, what a, what a cold day, huh? Oh, my goodness. Woke up this morning and said 47 degrees. And, yeah. And everybody, all my friends in New York are telling me to go kick rocks right now. Oh, it's hot <laughs> outside right now. It's really nice. Yeah. Hey, nice hat. Yeah, thank you. Nice hat. You got a camera? My, my new Lauren, you got that hat? Yeah. So get notice volleyball. You know, let's start there. Actually, let's jump ahead a little bit. Um, We're going to we're gonna jump ahead right to get notice. Okay, we can do yeah, that. Um, just to let everybody know to bring you bring everyone up to speed because regionally you're, you're you're a goddess and and nationally your name uh, is ringing out there. Um, Duran is the, the founder of Beach Volleyball National Events, which um, does uh, college showcases for recruiters. We had like forty five recruiters at the last big one. Um, she's also the founder of Endless Summer Beach Volleyball, one of the elite uh, beach volleyball clubs that leads the nation in recruitments per capita. We have um, eight, 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 to my memory, at least eight commitments. And and here she is. She's in the house. Hi. So here's my question. Yes. Let's start with BVNE. How did it start? Um, well, that's that's a good question. So it started because I had an indoor club, and it was called We Are Volleyball Elite, and the acronym we went by was Team Wave. Wave, yeah. And um, I had some of the top coaches in the, in the world. I had Marcio Sicoli who yeah. coached Kerry Walsh uh, and Misty May Trainer in the Olympics. Um, I had Jose Layola. I had Lars Hazen, who was an AVP ref. And I started that club because I lost my husband. And he had said very early on, I'm going to cry, because every time I talk about him, it makes me think about him, that uh, he said, no matter what you do in life, he says, do whatever you love. And at the time, I had lost um, my hedge fund. I was retired. I was independently wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was surviving on no money. I hid it from my husband that I didn't have any money because if he would have found out on his deathbed that we were broke, it would have just killed him. He so would have experienced death and deja vu. It yeah. would have been awful. So I had to rob from Peter to pay Paul. So when he finally died, which uh, was a relief in a sense because I was expecting it, then I could go to work on what am I going to do. And it took me a couple months. And I met... Um, a guy named Chris Sabalis. Yeah. Uh, hey, Chris, going to give you a shout out. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine. He's currently coaching at Long Beach, um, Long Beach Volleyball Club. And we started, that's how we started. We are Volleyball Elite. And so we started with, with some elite players. I had to find a way to provide for my family and um, to pay for volleyball because volleyball indoor is very expensive. It is. So we started the club. Everything's going well. Um I did, I did what my husband said. I, I, it took me a couple months, but you know, I, I woke up one day and I said, wow, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do a volleyball club. Cause at the time there was no, there was no beach volleyball. It was just indoor. Right. So started the club. Um, now you know that all the coaches were beach coaches. I didn't have one coach that was just a strictly indoor coach. Everybody on, on the team yeah. was... Yeah, and, that, and that's, a, that's a... Even now, that's a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, we, right? were, we, I mean... were, we were unicorns. But what we did was... So we were the first hybrid club where we were beach slash indoor. So part of the time, we would take the kids out to the beach and we would train right where Endless Summer trains now. And um, when the guys, uh, Marcio and uh, Jose, when they went to the, the last Olympics in Rio, um, I had tryouts and I had, I was gonna have to do tryouts without them. And that was probably the worst experience that I had to think of next to losing my husband was how I'm gonna hold tryouts without, you know, this crew. So it was, it was time for me to make a decision. Do I hold tryouts without them? Uh, do not such a great job because I wasn't the expert at it. They were, they were truly the experts. Um, or do I really do what I love? Because it, my, it kept coming back to me what my husband said, do what you love and love what you do. So I made the decision and I shut the doors down and um, I started Endless Summer, the, the volleyball club. Beach volleyball national events didn't come into the picture. I had to reinvent myself on that one. Right. So I had get noticed. 
um, Get Noticed was involved in a lawsuit. And recently, today, today's the day, I, uh, it comes back. It's the return of Get Noticed. And while we were in that lawsuit, I had to figure out what am I going to do? How am I going to reinvent myself? So within a matter of 48 hours, we had a new website, we had a new name, we had a new logo, we had a new mission statement, and we went, we just, it was like nothing ever happened. We just went from one to the other. Yeah. Uh, beach volleyball national events actually exploded. We're actually national now, so we're, yeah. you know, in several different states, and we have affiliates, yeah. and we're doing bid tournaments, and those affiliates now can use the Get Notice logo when they're doing their bid tournament, so we're really excited for them because everybody wants to win a bid. If you don't give a kid something to earn at the end of the day, if you're just giving it to them, it's what is it worth? So yeah. the bids are really important for them. And uh, so that's what we're doing. That's how I started Beach Volleyball National Events. Yeah, hey, listen, and it, it pays to have a, a, a husband who's like, <laughs> a, a tech guy i'm like hey find tony tony is a tutor for tech <laughs> come around can you see him in there he's in the camera say hi tony <laughs> what's up man <laughs> yeah everything that has to do with the computer uh, it happens with tony everybody yeah. thinks that that i'm i i do all of this wonderful things on the computer and stuff i actually only operate on my cell phone he's trying to get me on a computer um, I do pretty good on my cell phone. I talk yeah. to people, I make posts, I make, you know, professional ads and, yeah. you know, I do everything. Eventually I would, I would like to get on a computer, but I'm so, I'm everywhere, you know, I'm at practice, I'm at, you know, tournaments. And yeah. so I just, I work wherever I can. So if I'm, I'm driving home today, I'll probably make a post. And so my, my, my cell phone is my computer. You're very special. Hey, Miranda, um, on my messages, there's a video that she sent me. It's like a Star Wars thing, and I, I doubt that we'll get the sound, but oh. but I want to I want to show the, uh, the the audience a clip of um, yeah, uh, that see. a little bit. We can continue to talk because yeah. this is an audio thing, so we're just gonna right. we're gonna ramble on a little bit. Um, yeah, Team Wave. Yeah, Marcio right now is the head coach of Pepperdine. He is. Jose, Le Jose Leola was actually coaching. If you remember Trevor and Reed Pretty, uh, uh, I know. Both, both there. I mean, Trevor didn't win an AVP. Reed, you know, the AVP title was escaping him as well, uh, and um, and they won in Manhattan Beach, and that was pretty cool. And Loyola was the coach. No, the one before that. That's that's a Google Drive. Go, there's an actual video she sent me. Yeah. Uh, if you scroll, the link, yeah. now scroll a, a little further up. I think she that one right there. Click on that, and um, yeah, we can go. We can go on camera four. Check that out. There it is. Time to go much far away. And it's, it's criminal that we don't have the sound, but, <laughs> but you know, because um, it, it was so put, well put together. And it's, it's, ladies and gentlemen, that's Tony, man. That is, that is my, my Italian. That was, that, he asked my me what I wanted. I said, I said, I wanted those balls to come together. And explode, so he did that for me a couple times. That was pretty special. And we used the Star Wars thing, because Star Wars, I think, is coming out. I saw your face. Five days, Cool, man. So, here's the thing. Here is the go. Um, it becomes an NCAA sport. Yes. Beach volleyball, right? Yes. Now, all of a sudden, it's not just fun. It's not just kids splitting their time. And it's not kids cross-training to prepare for indoor. It's a business. Because yes. now there's scholarships. And if there's scholarships and parents don't have to pay for it, they'd rather, they'd rather spend their money that way. Right. Get, have, have, have the kids whatever and this and that right now in my observation um and i've been here i think actually now it's four years wow Chris, been here christmas a long time now. four years um yeah god man thank god thank yeah. the lord for you i can get in my my personal affection for you later because we have um um you're one of the reasons why I, I i am what i am you know um in, in beach volleyball so what happened duran was all of the club sizes have tripled and we um you you're the program director for Endless Summer, and you kept the the size the same. You, um, why? Uh, well, I think it's really important for me and for the girls that I'm training. Where we we want to t we want to train the girls that want to go to college, mm -hmm. and in order for them to get elite level training, you can't you can't get elite level training with 12 girls on a court or you know 10 girls on a court. So we keep our numbers low. Uh, most of the time we have six players on the court every once in a while if somebody doesn't call to let me know you know we'll be at eight players it's it's not a it's not a great big money maker I do it for the love of the business um, it's you know it's just one component of the business but keeping the numbers down 
is important because if I don't and I explode and I go big like everybody, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be the same as everybody else. And right now I want to be a specialty, a specialty club at Endless Summer. We want to train the girls that are serious and that are looking to go to college and we want to help them on their, on their whole journey. Yeah. Cool. Um, some of these bid tournaments, uh, BVNE, I'll oh, get notice mm -hmm. volleyball. Um, you're in Florida right now. Are you in Florida right now? Or, yes, we're all over the place. We're Texas, in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, for some of the people that are listening, some of their parents and their kids, um, so how do they, um, where do they get their information from? Well, so for the local tournament directors, they have, um, they have the email list that they send out to their local, to their local uh, kids there. And then we send out a national email list and it just, it just keeps growing. And I think also with Instagram and Facebook and social media today, I talk to a lot of the kids um, I want to say five years ago, I could be wrong. I talked to a girl from Singapore. She was asking me questions and we were going back and forth. You know, how old do I have to be? You know, what, what's my grad year? Just really simple questions. And I, one day out of the blue, I got a call from this mom and she said, Hey, you're talking to my daughter on Instagram. And I said, Oh, what's her name? And, and I go, yeah. And she goes, well, I just want to make sure you're a real person and that you have a legitimate business. She said, but I looked you up and everything looks really good. And she goes, we're going to come and see you. That girl now is at Tulane. So she played at one of our Get Notice tournaments from Singapore. And now she's currently uh, an NCAA athlete at Tulane. Nice. Who's the coach there now? The guy from Israel. What's his name again? Um, e? Yeah. I, I met him uh, numerous times. Very, very kind guy. I understand. Very capable of his job. So... It's not just beach volleyball national events. We've gotten people from other nations. Where else besides Singapore? Um, well, recently we had um, a girl from, come from England. Mm -hmm. uh, the dad found out about me. I, I interviewed him. I said, I'm going to have to interview because I, I just this is too good to be true. He was at a tournament in Sweden, and uh, a mom said, if you want to get noticed, you need to go play at BBNE because that's where my daughter got noticed by the college coaches. Yeah. So a That's guy from England, Presley Forbes for you guys at home. A guy from England talked to a mom in Sweden at a volleyball tournament, and there you go. So we had England, and then we had a returning player from Chile. This was her second time. The first time uh, she came, um, she just came for the clinic. She didn't have a partner for the showcase. And during the clinic, her mom came up to me, and she was very quiet. And she says, "Oh, this is my daughter, and and we're here for the clinic, and we're here from Chile." And I'm like, "What? You're here from Chile?" And she playing tomorrow and she said no she doesn't yeah. have a partner and i found her a partner i yeah. believe it was from somebody from sent sd beach yeah when they yeah. let me tell you something when they said they were here from chile right yeah. they, the way they said chile i'm like oh you're just here from chilling like chilling at home you yeah, know no, or, or, or like you got here before everybody else and you were chilling and wait for us to go and they said no no chile and i'm like yeah like okay i'm not gonna go out and get a bowl right yeah. <laughs> chile the country yeah they're, <laughs> wow they're, so they're coming from all so over sweden chile yeah. i think england right um, england yeah wow man we're gonna call we gotta change the name bvne to bv um i n e <laughs> <laughs> right beach volleyball international and national events wait until we hold an event in australia or something i, I mean you're gonna take over the world i'm, I'm that's in talks right now. I'm still, yeah. I'm talking to people. We haven't uh, really put a lot of forethought into it, but um, it's been on our minds. We've had people from Hawaii call us to do events and uh, New Zealand. I think New Zealand was the other one. So, I mean, anything's possible, especially with kids and, and the want and the need to play beach volleyball. So no doubt it's definitely a sport that, you know, is exploding for women mm. all over the world. So they're coming here. They're finding us. They want to go to the state. They want to go to school in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're the perfect place to get noticed. Actually, I want to see if I can fix your mic. Okay. All right. There. Ah, oh, there it is. Is that better? Yeah. Like we can see the nose and the mouth. All right. <laughs> we can still hear. Um, I was hiding from you. Yeah. Uh, oh, you were. Now, <laughs> you're yeah. hiding from the camera. Uh, so did you hear um, um, AVP and CBVA? I think they're, they have a partnership now. I did. CBVA, who's um, gone solo for so long, has um, right is now. Uh, some people say is now with the man, but not really. I mean, well, um, they were with P fourteen forty last year. Or yeah. Was it for two years or was it for one year? For at least, but we know, and some, at some, to some degree, like long term, yeah. they were they were with P fourteen forty a couple of years. A couple of years, okay. Um, I'm sure P fourteen forty and AVP have approached you with a partnership, right? Uh, no. No, they haven't. No. 
Okay, cool. It's um, well, to me, I'm very skeptical on what a partnership is, right? It's like, is is this a partnership or is this leftovers? And I, I'm, 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 and I'm, 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 everyone always says what I'm about to say is going to get me in some some hot water, but that's that's just who I am. Okay, I'm not, right. I'm not this way because I'm on camera. I'm I'm on camera because I'm this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, and that's why we love um, you, Jason. <laughs> so, with that, with that being said, if a partnership is like, hey, you know, you give us a bunch of money, and we'll, 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 we'll put like our banners and stuff, and poles and, and lines and uh, and whatever. That's not, you know, that's not a partnership uh, um, right. where the monetary gain and the profits should where where both people benefit. And if people think they're just gonna go and see the name and pay the money, I guess that's where they're they're right. thinking where your gain's supposed to be. So was that was that would that be one of the reasons why um um I don't know, is is it one of the reasons why they, they, they haven't approached you because you think they think you might not be interested anyway? <laughs> I have all I I have no idea. All I know is that um you're not getting rich in, in beach volleyball. In, right. In 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 any way, shape, or form, you might make a little monetary gain. Um, we're we're making a living, and we're doing what we, we love while we're making that living. We're not making millions of dollars. Um, I know what the bottom line is. I know what it takes to run a tournament. I know what the costs are. And when you start having you know that extra overhead with refing stands and the ref padding and all the center court, you know, everything starts adding up, and that's that's that adds up to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands Agreed. of dollars. Yeah. So um, I'm not really sure what their partnership is. You know, I think for for volleyball as a whole to have a healthy uh, ecosystem, we need a play. We need the AVP and we need CBBA and we need AAU and USA is I don't know. We haven't seen USA volleyball here in uh, Southern California for a while. We don't know what happened to them, but we need and we need BB and E. We need right. we there needs to be variety for these kids. If there's not variety, if there's only one shop out there. It gets old. And how many times a month can you go play at the same tournament, play the same kids? Comes a little bit redundant, yeah. Yeah, and that's why BVE is exciting because our last tournament, um, which was a club and high school tournament, we had a girl from New York. So people are now pulling in their friends from other states to come and play with them. I like it. Yeah, yeah. truly, truly a national event. Yes. And, um, yes. I, and it's good. And it's good. I, I think for the kids, it's good for their marketing capability to show that they can play with various partners who have different training as opposed to um, this um, incestuous relationship. That we've seen like certain people come up, which I thought has weakened the college scene in Amer and the, Amer the American volleyball scene co collectively. If you just have these cliques and if right. you just have this tribalism, oh, they're only with this person and that person, guess what? Right. Somewhere on the other side of the world, someone's um, either has, they have new, new or better ideas than you do, or they see your ideas and they're taking your ideas and they're making them better, right? Good artists right. create, but great artists steal. Right. So, um, and I think, and, and on the, at least on the indoor set, um, and he, no, and on the beach set too. I think collectively, the reason why we, we for a little while we're getting our hand, our butts handed to us is because um, I think the other nations, uh, uh, by no choice of their own, they had to be open minded, right? They didn't have the quantity, and and they didn't they didn't have the money either. So right. they may do what they had, and like you said, just a bunch of passionate savages, you know. Think, I mean, look at Norway right now. They have a high school. They have a volleyball academy. You you you, you right. take math, science, history class, and your gym class right. is volleyball. Uh, Andrews Mall and Kristen Sorum, who who's, um, in my opinion, inarguably inarguably touted the best team in the world. They're twenty one and twenty three years old. Well, and beach volleyball doesn't require the amount of money that it takes to play indoor. Mm. Um, you know, indoor is you gotta I, rent the gym. Gotta get a have a net. Yeah. I've heard anywhere between four and ten thousand dollars, depending on if you're a non-travel team, it's in the four and five. Yeah. If you're on a travel team, it's between six and ten. That's mm -hmm. a year. That's a season. That's not yeah. even for a full year. So, beach volleyball is a lot less ex inexpensive. You play, you pay for your club dues. For example, at uh, endless summer, our club dues are pretty simple. Yep. You know, it's forty dollars if you just go. You know, pay as you go. It's two eighty if you do for eight for eight sessions. Uh -huh. uh, we're pretty transparent. It's posted everywhere. We don't we don't have any hidden fees or anything. And the coaching's top notch. I mean, the co and you're one of the coaches. Yeah. Uh, and I the, mean, <laughs> and the coaching is top notch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, think about it, right? Look, yeah. you started with Sicoli, 
all right, all right. Um, yes. who's now the head coach at Pepperdine, is also Misty's coach and, and Kerry's coach, two gold medals and a bronze with April Ross as well. Right. Um, you have um, you had Jose Leola, right. um, who's been play- a long time player and uh, and and also uh, uh, like a gritty old school mind. You know, like as far as if you're not a millennial, if you if you have thick skin, right. you, 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 he can make you a winner. You just have to be able to go by that strict whatever. And I know that because right. that's the way I coach. That's that's right. why you brought me on because right. you had a bunch of young coaches, people back talking. You, you, you needed someone. Right. Right. school you have um um we have pompilo for a little while who was who was jose loyola's coach right like, i've been coaching for 21 years um uh, but only like four four beat four sand this man has been coaching sand right. for 30 years think about how many times think about how many times the rules have changed in 30 years you had a long court 30 years ago he's, you had he's seen you had, it all you had that heavy ass ball with the, the top flight when you hit it it started to look like an egg but yeah. shaped like an egg. So you had a long court. weren't allowed to hit the net on the serve. Uh, um, no let one, serves. Uh, uh, no let serve. No yeah. rally. Just, yeah. just strict. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, and and he's been through all of those those like thirty years of transition. Transition is just amazing. Yes. Now that being said, as uh, we're since we're on the subject of coaching, because um, you've also coached for a long time, still coach right now. Right. Um, I guess my question is, and I, I know the answer to the first one, so I'm, but for the audience, because you know this isn't just an inside joke, so I'm circle jerk. Um, we, which one do you enjoy coaching more, indoor or, or sand? That's my first question. And what do you enjoy more about it? Oh, I, I mean, hands down, beach volleyball. I, I, first question. Yeah. <laughs> if if I had to say for indoor, when I coached, I loved the boys more because they had thicker skin. And I could just take them outside, and if they weren't listening, I'd make them run, and then they'd come back, and then they'd listen the whole rest of the season because yeah. they would know that I'm serious. I know I'm not a yeller or anything like that. But I, I enjoyed the young ones to try and find out who's serious, who wants to play beach volleyball, who wants to play for the longevity. Uh, I enjoy them all, and I, I enjoy the older ones. I just got a couple of uh, new ones from uh, – Chris Sabalas at San Pedro High School. He sent okay. a couple of new girls from San Pedro, which is my alma mater. Nice. And um, I said, you know, you guys keep coming because I'm not going to give this to you on a, on a silver platter. We'll we'll see what we can do. There, everybody out there is recruitable. There's yeah. a there's a school for everybody. It just depends on do you know what your wheelhouse is, and if you do, and if you understand that you can't go. Not everybody's going to go to USC, UCLA, Pepperdine. Not everybody's going to go to those schools. So as long as as long as a person knows that and they understand that, we'll find them a school. Yeah, we'll I, I would also suggest that people. You have to remind some of these kids. And this includes the ones who get in the USC or UCLA. We have um, right? We had like what three girls going to USC or four or whatever from right. the club. Um, remind them that student comes before the student athlete. Right. Remind them that um, you're there to pursue something where your your either your strengths play play to 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 you know whatever needs someone might have in the near distant future what you're good at or what you love so if davis has a better theater program than usc and they probably don't but but if they do go to go go to davis right go to davis ali mcculloch the head coach there, very capable coach every bit as capable oh, as, yeah. as, as 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 dane who you know with respect to him he's an olympic gold medalist right but, but players the coaches that's where the rubber meets the road on who's going to be a who was a better player and who's who's actually a better coach right we we um <clears throat> and student comes before student athlete and this and for the girls that's that's the harder part because now they they have more scholarships to offer for whatever for the boys it's a very easy argument because as a, the men only have 4.5 scholarships a team for four, indoor yeah 4.5 4. Yeah. yeah so when <laughs> yeah people say oh my kid got in the usc my kid got it whatever i'm like how good is he? Did he get a full ride, or is right. it? Is, or are they splitting that part? Uh, some of those partials five ways or whatever. So, very, very, very important. My, you know, my girl went to Harvard. Right. You know, I mean, um, um, but student came before the student athlete. <laughs> I think for for beach volleyball, for the recruiting aspect of it, it's the way I explain it to my kids and my parents. It's like, it's like the bachelor or the bachelorette. You're dating. You're 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 kind of like speed dating. You want to give everybody a kiss. You want to try and hold everyone's hand you want to be in love with everybody because not everybody's gonna love you back yeah. somebody and if somebody if you get more than one or two people to love you back mm-hmm. then you have choices because there's not always a ton of choices there's choices depending on what school you want to go to so they yeah. can get narrowed down depending on if you're reaching too high you know, if you think if you've never won any tournaments around here in our area right and you want to go to USC 
um, it's going to be hard to get in without mm-hmm. having any without having any background or history of you know wins or anything like that. It's going to be a very uphill battle. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, for me, uh, just getting back to the other thing as far as coaching indoor and outdoor. Mm-hmm. I enjoy coaching indoor, and I only I'm only I only have one gig right now for indoor. Right. So it's evolution. Uh, right. God bless you, Duncan Avery. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I, I love play running, and I love the art and science of trying to shut down teams who are bigger and that are that are, that jump high. Oh, that's and just, awesome! And just you know, um, blocking schemes and this and that. I'm I'm a coach that. I think the reason why I've had some success is I don't play everybody the same way. You know, right. When when you're like some of these club teams, if they're recruiting the best kids and the best kids try out. You don't need a, a terribly capable coach. That my cat can coach that team. It's right. like, I mean, you're not teaching those kids how to play. You're teaching those kids how to win and conquer demons. So, um, and yesterday, today's Monday, right? Yesterday I was at an- Anaheim um, convention. Oh, Center. don't miss that place at all. Um, we had a disappointing start. Like we were gold the whole day in the last bracket. We we got knocked into silver, and I gave him a speech about let's just let's just leave here winners. Right. Make sure your last one was a win. And um, what happens is we we face this team from Arizona. And you're gonna and you're gonna love this one because I didn't tell you yet. You know, you're, um, we get it comes a game three, right. and it's thirteen up. And um, we, I go to I ask who wants the ball. I call timeout. Who wants the ball? And everyone's like me, me, me. But I'm like you, Jesse. You know, Jesse, um, really good player. And I said, let's go thirty-one from my middle. Clear him out. Thirty-one, go five and big. Uh, if that middle, I said that middle blocker is going to take a jerk step to the right. He might not jump, which uh, he might try to jump back in. You should have all the cross in the world. And we ran his play, and he hit it really, really hard. And they dug it. And when they dug it on transition, they popped it to deep position one, you know, off the block. And my guy Jesse runs into the crowd, like you know how the chairs, the, the yeah, chairs yeah. that surround the uh, the court. Right. And once you leave, once you step off it, you're out of bounds. Right. So he jumped in the air. His feet never hit the ground. Dove through. The parents moved out of the way. Jumped over the chairs. Brought the ball back. But the way he brought the ball back, it was like shot like a hit. So the blocker who turned around saw this ball come back. And out of self-defense, just put his forearms out in front of him. It goes over her. goes over the net. <laughs> and they run an X play. And they miss. And they hit out. And now we're up 14-13. Oh, nice. And now they call a timeout. And this guy who, who comes in as a service specialist, he doesn't get a lot of playing time. He's 15 in, in our 17th group. Right. He just wanted to play up, and his father was like, you know, oh, my kid's a rock star. And, you know, he, he plays all the time, and it's really hard for him not to play, you know, because the older group and the ball. And I said, once he adjusts his matrix, he'll play more. Adjust, right. adjust your matrix for those of you who listen, meaning your elite athletes have this way of uh, slowing down time around them where they operate at normal speed, mm-hmm. and everything else is like three-quarter speed. So the whole time he wants to come in to serve, and it's match point, and I look at him, and I'm like, you want to go in serve, right? And he says, yeah. I said, all right, go in. And and I said, hey, just take a deep breath, let it out, and have some fun out there. Just get some serve, just space work this guy's left shoulder. Duran, this dude. <laughs> oh my God, go go on YouTube, go on YouTube, go on my videos, uh, uh, or go to my library, and it's up. And uh, we're gonna work. I want you, I want us to scroll all the way to the last play. This kid, he doesn't tap it in to keep it to keep it in. He doesn't jump float. He goes like, for it. He tosses this ridiculous whatever. Hits like the, the the outside part of his hand drops from position five ace, and like the front row, the player's front row. I don't two to three blockers. I don't even think knew he was in the game. <laughs> okay, They're so like, what? <laughs> so when they got the ace and they turned around, they just went oh, and it was this big big Rudy moment for this kid who now you know he needed to find a defining moment to feel like he was contributing. Like the the club is a family. They all eat together. They roll like a pack. But yeah. there there there's some kids who want to feel important where. Um, they they have to, you but know, you do a yeah, good go, job. Try to go, go you do a good job end, bringing like, that out in them. Is, you yeah. you you work with them and you allow them to realize, oh, I can do that. Like you empower them. You're right. Is this it? No. So, um, Miranda, I'm sorry. It's mm-hmm. against um, uh, Arizona team. You're gonna see a team in parentheses that says AZ. If you look on the uh, the videos. Well, you know, if you invite me to one of your uh, events. Um, hold on, wait, hold it right there. Um, AZ. That one. MVC Black. Yeah, it's gonna pop up on our on our screen. Um, and they're the really huge team on the court closest to. They're they're huge. We're small. We have we basically have six outside hitters. We have a third string middle who's starting because he's thrown in the deep end, and and uh, we have three outside uh, six outside hitters. <laughs> so that's the timeout. Um, we'll get we'll get we'll get there in a minute. Four more. Yeah. 
just like double tap the side. It should, it should do a quick scroll. You Here know, I'd love to come to indoor and support oh, your team. There it is. It's timeout. They call it timeout. Oh, I do the sub first because the whole time they're not sure if he wants him to come in. Wait, is You're this like, him? No, that's my oh. starter. That's my best hitter, by the way. That's my best hitter coming out of the game. My best offensive player coming out of the game. And this is the kid. Yeah, no call time. Let's do it. Let's do a really quick step. Yes. And it's great because the whole time I've been in the middle of the game, I'm so, um, against the weaker teams, you know, I've got some full time players. Uh, but this is, this is for the win. And he's going to say. And it is, it's like a half jump, half floater, and it is ridiculous. So, I, I, so, and I, I jumped off the deep end in the point I was trying to make there. Um, you know what that guy said to me? You got some balls. He said, you got a big set of balls. Was that his dad? Yeah, no, that was uh, uh, the uh, the other player, the opposite. <laughs> that, that was... um. Well, you know, sometimes sometimes you got to give somebody a little a little push to get their glory. You Absolutely. know, if they and haven't had and that, it. But that was his defining moment, and now, yeah. now he's you know he's always been one of them, but now he's now he's, I want to come see your kids play. Yeah, man. So I so I jumped off the deep end, and I'm going to bring it back to the point I was trying to make. Okay. It was the first time since I've coached club indoor that I left Anaheim with a smile on my face. Oh, so I've it's never, hard. Yeah. I have never left Anna Slime, uh, Anna Slime Sports Center. Or Anaheim Convention Center, which is nice. I never left that place with a smile on my face. I always left miserable. Yeah. I always left miserable because the parents were like gangster rappers. They, you know, I'm taking my kid from the gym or playing time, this and that. You know, every, every now and then you get one of them. Right. Um, and it's such a hostile environment. Everybody, parents, coaches, walking around, mean mugging each other. You know, the, <laughs> this click is over here. This click, you know what I'm saying? This click is over here. This click is over there. Right. And, and, you, and, and this was the first weekend. You know what? I had solitaire. The classic solitary right, edition. Right. I kept my head on my iPad the entire weekend. I'm, I'm if you could, if you said hi to me, I'm good. I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm I not talking to you. No, I wasn't there to socialize. I just so you know, these um, uh, there's so many phony people, and it's such a hostile environment. I never leave. I always leave that place like. I want to. I don't want to coach indoor anymore. I want to coach beach. So that's the point I was trying to make. The point I was trying to make. I enjoy beach, the environment so much. Oh, the yeah. parents are sitting there. They're eating sweet potato fries. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're they're chilling. This one's got a little wine in her. Whatever. I'm not calling out nobody's name, but you know who you are. You know. Uh, right. They're eating fruit. They're sitting in beach chairs. It's such a a, a, a more um, organically nice environment they're not nice for its own sake they, they're, yes they're just in a better mood these are you know i think indoor they're they're generally nice people that are in a bad mood they don't want to be there right. so these are nice people who just get to be themselves that right. includes the players and we both know right that includes uh the uh the parents and coaches well you know interestingly enough when i had my club uh indoor i would go to practices mm -hmm. and i would go i would take turns and i would i would rotate every weekend and i would go to different games and whenever i was at a practice or I was at a game, Every, everybody was little angels. Everybody minded their P's and Q's, it was great. The minute I'm not there, I'm like, why can't you guys behave yourselves? It was the most, it was so odd and bizarre for me to understand why a group of adults, and the kids were always like, oh my God, I can't believe that parent did that. And mm. you know, like I had one dad that would uh, come into the gym and he would tell his kid what to do. And I'm like, you, you can't be, in, you can't, no, you're no. not the coach. If you want her to be on a team yep. and you want her to be coach and you need to let her be coach and you need, you need to leave the gym. But the, it's, it's not all, it's, it's not all roses at the beach. There are some, there are some bad apples and hopefully um, those bad apples don't continue to be bad apples because listen, there's, there's a lot of clubs in, uh, in our, in our area. And uh, there's, Endless Summer, there's MB San. I'd like to give a shout out to Patty. Patty, and I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna go off track here. That's fine. Uh, it's I, a podcast. We're yeah. To go off okay. Track. Good. Mm -hmm. Last year at the convent, I think it was last year, or was it the year before? Maybe it was last. It was two years ago. She was. Uh, I went to go to one of her uh, beach uh, training, and she said, "If anybody out there, you know, gets a survey from CBVA, and uh, if they ask, you know, can you do hand setting, no call rule for 12s and 14s?" Mm. And I'm like, "I can do that." I have my own series on BVNE. So I put that in place. So thank you, Patty, for bringing that up. Uh, it's been a huge success. Um, the kids love it. Number one, when you're 12 and you're 14, 
the wor- the scariest thing is to put your hands up and knowing that you're probably going to get called on something. Yeah. Now these kids are hand setting at a younger age, and you would be amazed how good it's they like are. It's like the ball's bigger than them. You're 12. It's like the ball is the yes. size of you, and these kids are setting. Yes. I'm like, I was never that good. Miranda, I mean, right? You you, you grew up playing volleyball. Man, I mean, that's a, that's a great evolution I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, for, for kids that just... just set <laughs> yeah so that that was that was something that that came out good from the abca um when i went i'm going off track again uh but there's a we have a lot of clubs in our in our little in our little area so there's endless summer mb sand there's um la beach and then there's there's elite everybody has good clubs um there's hermosa that mm-hmm. was on second now they're at um the pier for whatever reason i don't know what happened there but um there are some bad apples, and those bad apples need to, to clean up their acts. That's all I have to say about, yeah. you know, coaching. <laughs> coaching their, coaching is not allowed no matter what beach you go on. I am not making up new rules, no. <laughs> but coaching is not allowed while your team is on the court, while your team is serving the ball, while your team is getting ready to hit the ball over the net. You cannot tell your team hand set the ball over the net it's it's not good. No. it's not now for, for the people who hear the chuckles in the back while Duran's talking <laughs> i think for her saying this that's all i have to say it has to be the single most um composed <laughs> uh, way she's ever addressed this this issue Duran, i am so proud of you <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Yes, everybody knows what it. I mean, but I mean yeah. you know, all these all these club directors, they all come to the tournaments and every everything's fine and then you get this one that's just, you know, you just go, "Wow, how mm-hmm. what happened there?" you know. Yeah. Like, but for yeah. the most part, the beach is great and our motto at Endless Summer is there's no bench on the beach. I like it. I like it. And it's, I mean, it's easy to set up. The location doesn't really change. The nets are there. Um, Your kids gonna play. They're not yeah. gonna sit on the bench. There's two players. There's they have to both play. Unfortunately, if one gets injured, then you're out. But no. you're playing the whole time. How's Presley doing? She's doing great. As a matter of fact, uh, her and I have to figure out. Well, we'll get it done. We got to get me down the stairs into a Hummer hmm. and pick up Oz so he can go train her tomorrow early before practice. Oh, she's here. Oh yeah, she's here. She's already worked out this morning. All right, cool. She's on her own. For those of you, for those of you listening, don't know what the hell we're talking about. Presley Forbes, uh, Duran's daughter, um, gracious, graciously listed at five foot three, was <laughs> like the shortest player to get a beach volleyball scholarship. She was uh, recently at University of Hawaii and is now transferred to um, Florida International. Mm-hmm. Right. That's uh, correct. Uh, um, With some very, very, oh my God, and not just that, some very good coaches and assist, some awfully good coaches and assistant coaching. Um, and in my memory, were they the team that beat? Um, USC first round. Who was that? That beat um, last year. They, uh, they no, upset. that was Stetson. Stetson. That was Stetson. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Check the forecast and hell, it just froze over, yeah. huh? Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, they only won because they use international players. And you're gonna love what I'm gonna say next, unless you want to take it from here. You want to take the wheel here? Well, I mean, part of part of the part of the fabric of of beach volleyball is international players. Listen, we're not gonna get any better if we continue to play ourselves. So when we play international players, when we learn what they're doing, if they have a set, you know, we've never, we've never run plays before. My, Bobby Jones. Sorry. Go ahead. My, my daughter is sending me video and she's like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And they're plays, they're actual players in the FIVB mm-hmm. and they're running, you know, they're passing over to their, the left side players passing over to the right and the right side players running to set that ball. The, the, the people on the other side, the blocker thinks that she's going to set over here in the corner. No, she's going to shoot, shoot yeah. it over here. So she's like, wow, I really like that. So these international players bring a whole new flavor of, you know, what, what's going on in beach volleyball? Yeah. How are they winning? They're doing something different. I love, listen, I love USC um, for the reason uh, they're alumni. Nobody takes better care, of, with the exception of Harvard, nobody takes better care of their own than USC, right? I mean, the post-graduation, post-graduate hire, it's, it's basically, this zip code is USC. You see right. flags, there's, there's right. flags, USC's, you know, uh, not the United States flag, not, you know, um, um, and like Dallas Cowboy fans, they can be some of them, the, the, the biggest, and, and, and um, oh, this is controversial, but I'm gonna say, it. some of them, could, it could be the most annoying fan base. Like, I don't have a problem with the, the athletes and the way they coach, as much as I have a problem with some of the people that think that, that um, 
the, 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 the zip code is all that matters. So the same person that said, oh, they're, they're using international players, this and that. And I'm, I asked them this. I said, let me ask you something. And I'm glad you, you said it first because I was going to start cursing. And I ain't going to curse in this podcast. Um, I said, who is the best? Because this is last year. I said, who's the best player in USC right now? I said, say it with me. I said, Tina Gradino, right? T- Tina Gradino, Tina Gradino, yeah, who was she a, was. Who was a, and I said, where's she from? Latvia. She's from Latvia. I said, sit the F down. Sit down. Yeah. Shut up. You're talking about international players. Your best player. Right. Is, is La- who, by the way, that's my best friend's goddaughter. My best right. friend, oldest Lucius, who went to UCLA. Um, turns out, that, uh, small world, turns out that's his goddaughter. Um, and I said, who, uh, who is the starting pair one for UCLA? The McNamara's. Where are the McNamara's from? Canada. They're from Canada. Yeah. Who is the best player last, the Long Beach State one, that kid from Norway, number four? Yeah. Um, Kofi. UCLA, yeah. big, big middle. Where's he from? He's yeah. from Canada. Just, yeah, come on. It's already, so, I mean, I didn't like the, this, this, this West Coast exceptionalism. Like when they do it, it's, it's, right. oh, it's all about the zip code. But when someone else does it, oh, it's international players. No, get on the court, compete. And if whoever wins, wins. And whoever right. loses, loses. I think regardless of, of where you're from, but I, I do I do feel strongly that the international players are bringing something new to the game. Yep. They're competing. And for some reason, I don't know why, Florida has a little better lock on getting those international uh, players. FIU, which is Florida International, um, they have quite a few international players. They have yeah. the, the two Italians who are phenomenal. These girls are amazing. Uh, yeah. but, but Stetson does have a very large um, contingency of um, – international players yep yeah i wasn't trying to bust out usc too much because think about yeah. it my, look i had lucas yard on my podcast he's so yeah. chill right uh alexa strange the 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 extrovert of extroverts i was gonna say you're not gonna awesome. say she's chill awesome. <laughs> trying to get kelly I love her. <laughs> try, trying no yeah trying to get kelly clays on the show and you know she yeah. didn't know about the show but i was just letting her know i was no stranger to having people from you know representing usc on the show dane dane's dane's interested when he ha- if he has time ran in a read pretty this morning for those of you tuning in, read pretty. Um, he's interested because I told him he has a huge international population in New York. Oh yeah, that follow him closely from his indoor career. Right, Olympic gold medalist, right, um, and now AVP champ. Right, so that that's that's really cool. So, um, when's the uh, next PPN? Is it in February? Uh, no, the next. Are you kidding? We're we're going to be our next one is in Arizona on January 11th at the Sand Club, and that one's going to sell out. So if you're from Arizona and you're listening. Uh, get signed up. There's only two, one spot left in the 14s, and I think two in the 12s, and then the 18s or 16s are right behind it on selling out. The Sand Club is doing a phenomenal job. Nice. What's your, what's your favorite ball? Now you don't have to say your sponsor. Aww. I know, I, I know you feel like you got to say the sponsor. It's well, a, is it is Mikasa the sponsor now, the King Ma, of the Beach? Ma, and I wish I would have brought a ball. I that was the one thing I lacked. But I, as you know, I had knee surgery, a full knee replacement, yeah. so. I'm not actually, you know, carrying stuff yeah. around with For me. For those of you listening, this woman had to be carried in on a drumstick. She just had knee surgery, and she is still here like a gangster, okay? So for all of the people that say they don't have time to do this podcast, this woman leads by example, not by exception. Sorry, I interrupted. So um, I, I do have to say it is Mikasa. Even even uh, my daughter, she she came home, and the first thing she did was grab a ball, and she's hand setting it and she's not going to be playing with that in college they're playing the wilson right the, the they're blue, playing the with the one. wilson yeah. ball so she you know had asked she says is there any way we can get a hold of some other balls and i said yeah one of the one of the coaches will have some wilson balls yeah. because she said it's her own pompilo have them it's it's easier to play with uh-huh. it's easier to hand set it's got a better grip it's easier to train with it's a little more sticky so for the and it's a little heavier and for the juniors you want them to be successful. You don't want them to have to play with something that isn't going to be um, good for them. No. Not not that the Wilson isn't good for them. It's just that you want them to have a little a little. It's well, like the, it's like the, the margin hand- for error is smaller with the Wilson. Yeah, but, but it's like the hand setting rule. If yeah. you can if you can have a no call rule at BBNE mm-hmm. in the twelves and fourteens. Listen, I wish we can do it for sixteens and eighteens. Yeah. That's another topic because we have coaches that think you can deep dish the ball. Let's just get one thing straight. Deep dish is for four man. If you want to deep dish a ball, if you want to, if you want a handset, and yes. if you want to deep dish a ball, mm-hmm. we don't deep dish on the beach. I, I'm not, you know, there's no. there's people out there that think so. Um, just for yeah. for the record, you know, at BV at beach volleyball national events, you know, we're we're keeping the ball high. If you 
bring it down a little lower, that's fine. But if you're bringing it all the way down here, yeah. it doesn't matter how fast you release it. You still got to bring it down. Yeah, we um, and that's called deep dish. Yeah, for, uh, for the people listening to this podcast, I had um referee Dave Lar uh, Carson on, and it was 58 minutes, and right? for 40 of the 58 minutes. It was all about hands. It was. And, it was. It was about just um, discussing uh, fluidity versus um, what's a carry. Uh, and did he uh, and talk about when you're when your hands hitting? You got to you have to actually look at the ball, so your head mm -hmm. should be facing up. Yeah. I mean, because if you catch if you catch a ball here and your eyes are here, you're not you're you've dropped it way below the plane of what I think is, and I know it's a very um, it's a very subjective. That's the hardest thing to call is hand setting. Right. So we teach our players yeah. that in the summer when you're hand setting, everything's up here. Right. So when you see us post photos of girls hand setting and their hands are up here, that's because we're teaching them to keep their hands up here. We're not teaching them to drop their their hands. Like we, right. that's that's just not. Well, I, I had a uh, off and uh, on and off camera discussion with him, and I think the two major things they're looking for is is actually fluidity and um, where where there's not a discontinuation. If there's a discontinuation where it looks like a catch and throw, it's going to be a carry. That's one. Two, where where you had your hands. Right. Uh, a lot of the refs and Lars to uh, with the Lars talk to you about this. Um, hands lower, not a problem, as long as you don't take it, when the ball comes in, you take it down and back up. Right. Like you can start here and, and push off. So, and the European setters, like if you got, I mean, European setters, actually the hands already start high and they stay high. We're not, we're not catching know? a ball here. We're not bringing it all the way down. That's here. what I'm, that's and, that's, and that's what Lars is talking about. Right. And yeah. that's what, that's what some people have yeah. said that should, should be legal. And that's how, and I'm like, no, we say, we say deep dish for the pizza. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Barefoot, Barefoot Juniors um, just posted a question. Uh, Rock's partner, uh, Rocks yeah. partnered up with the AVP for America for Juniors. Thoughts? Uh, Barefoot ran under Rocks for a few years, and I'm not familiar with AVP America. Um, you know, I really don't. Neither am I. <laughs> I, I know, and neither, neither do I. I really don't know enough about their partnership to understand what their partnership is about, what they're doing, what their what their mission is. I don't know what their mission statement is, so... Yeah. So I don't really know. All I can say is that if you are an affiliate with Beach Volleyball National Events, mm -hmm. which we will only have so many in uh, each state, you're running bid tournaments for two championships, not just one. So our championship tournament uh, coincides with the AVP because there's a lot of people that come out here for the AVP and they want to come. And they don't just want to play one. Not everybody can come and play in the BBCA and the AAUs or they don't have, a, you know, a place to win bids. So we're on the back end. There's, you know, BBCA and AAU Junior Olympics and then AAU Nationals on the front end. Right. And then there's AVP and BVNE on the back end. So we're one day after the AVP. We're July 27th. Uh -huh. um, so at the juniors uh, for um, the AVP, so people I know are going to go and play there. But if you win a bid, you're winning a bid in out of state for two championships. One is the Kauai Bikini Championship. Right. And that's where everybody gets a bikini in California. So if you're playing in cool. another state, you're not getting a bikini. But if you come to California, you you do everybody gets a top and a bottom. And then um, they're one day events. That was the other thing that I talked about with a lot of my parents and families is, you know, they pack and they get to the beach and they lug everything down and they put their fifteen dollars in, and the mom just got everybody situated and she got food for the kids. She has three little kids playing at the water, and she comes back, and her kid just got through playing two games. They're done for the day. Now they got to go home. Hmm. She's like, why can't we just do it all in one day? So our tournament is designed for those who just want to come and do a one-day championship tournament. Everybody breaks pool. They'll, um, they'll be relegated into their respective divisions, which will be gold, silver, bronze, and copper. Right. Um, so if you, know, if you come out first in your pool, you're going to go into the gold division. And if you're in the gold division... The prizes are amazing. Really at, are. at our at, at our last tournament, I think first place got um, Ponakai beach hats, a Ponakai backpack. They got um, speakers. They got a uh, Kawhi bikini. Headphones. They got they got headphones. They got BVNE purple shirts, which everybody wants, and we only have a limited supply. We want to keep it that way. We want to keep everybody wanting them. But if you win first place at certain tournaments, we are sending out uh, purple BVNE shirts. I like that. I like that a for lot. For the winners. That's cool. Yeah. So I thought AVP did a, bit, a good job. I don't know how long they were doing stay and play. Stay and play is like look for people that got eliminated um, oh, in the everybody... qualifier but didn't make the draw. They I have... think everybody oh, loved that. Uh, it was great. New York was great because they did stay and play at Pier 25. Uh, the, they built this new facility 
Pier, right. Pier 29 or something like that for the like the center court and and the two courts were elevated above and I thought big up to Donaldson big up to um, Jeff Conover uh, for, uh, who are, and whoever's in charge of that to make that happen because um, I didn't have the vision until it was there and it was and it was wonderful but where they had the old AVP they had to stay in play they also right. you know the qualifier too the qualifier right, right, right. courts for the qualifier and um, stay in play is one of the biggest the best things they ever have for adults and I was, I mean, I was glad oh, yeah. that, that the kids um, it's not staying in play is not something to have to worry about because the structure right um, allows them to do that. You just sign up at the last minute because you're done playing. Yeah. But to go back to that question, hopefully I don't know how to answer that. I don't really know what their um, yeah. what their vision is, what they're doing. I don't know what state it's in. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe I get them on the show. Maybe I get Jeff. I'd like. Je- I would love Jeff to be on the show, and I would love love of Donald's son. <laughs> Donald's done. I mean, I I I I love for him to come here and and, and um address some of these the the, the fun stuff and, yeah. and, maybe, and maybe some difficult questions too like sure yeah I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna ask, I don't have difficult questions to ask you because nobody think I got that I got nothing on you <laughs> <laughs> nobody has anything on you um we um we're gonna talk a little bit about we're talking about mental health in sports right we had a little conversation yes. a couple of weeks about uh, uh, ago about that um, yes and um John Mayer He's he's LMU. He's all about growth mindset. Me, I'm a little bit more old school, mm-hmm. and my opinion, and you can chime in, was there are some kids if you're hard on them and if you're strict, um, that pressure right makes them perform. Sure. Where there's some kids, if I'm do that, that pressure just makes them fold. All right, and it's a big challenge for me as a coach because every you know everyone's like, oh, you should change, you'd be better, and this and that way, and I don't and I don't really want to. I don't want you know. Um, but at the same time, like us as coaches, the reason why kids want to play is we make it interesting. We, we, um, show them how to, you know, the rules are what the rules are and how to play. And then they leave wanting to know more. I mean, in other words, the, the volleyball virus, right? It's our function to plant the virus, the volley virus in their head. No, no, no known cure, by the way, there's no cure for it. Um, and we don't want them to be like, oh man, I got to go to volleyball practice. So, I mean, Chime in. Well, I think you already know that I'm a mm. um, big believer in, in a tough practice. I mean, I've got Lars over there. Oh, you missed, you know, push-ups and then, you know, every, every you, you're doing, oh, yeah, yeah. Oz, yeah, you guys are all, you guys are all doing your part. Um, yeah. You know, the little girls are like, oh, we got to do push-ups. Yeah. You want to be stronger? You want to, you want to make your serving? Yep. So I'm, I'm a big component for pushing kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but to talk about mental health awareness, you know, we had one in our volleyball community um, commit suicide this year um off, off of the avp oh eric zahn eric zahn yeah. um but i do believe and i know there's been a lot of ncaa athletes commit suicide uh there's been some talk of uh i've talked to kids that have said that they felt that maybe their life wasn't worth anything without volleyball because their coaches told them that they sucked they had no cut shot they had no ball control um, they were the worst one on the team. So it's things like that mm-hmm. that I think should be taken out of the equation. If coaches are going to coach, they need to coach because they love the game. They don't need to coach to, coach to bully people. You, yeah. can't, you can't tell an elite athlete. For the sake of winning. Yeah. Yes. You can't tell an elite athlete who's won year after year after year after year over and over and over again at high open level tournaments that, you know, I can't believe you ever won anything in California. I'm not going to name any names. But you can't tell somebody that without them getting mentally, men, they have mental problems after that. Yeah. Their, their mental health is, is an issue and it's a problem. Yeah. I think what happens is, and this happened to me when I moved here, um, volleyball for a long time was my escapism. Right. All right. So at some point where you decide this is what you want to do and your, your, escape, your escapism becomes your career. Right. You need a new escape. You need, you need something that, that, uh, that allows you to come back because now it's like work and play but right. it's work right so you so i think some of these kids need a support system that allows them like off the court that allows them to just compartmentalize what goes on the court and then separate that and that starts with the coach so the parents too and friend i guess and like you said fellowship amongst their peers which i think women do a better job at than, that helps, than but, the men do but i think the other thing that would help is if they had an independent uh person working especially with females females you know they're hormonal. They have periods. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might say something to them, you know, 
on on that day and they might just go off the deep end you don't know what you're what you're going to trigger yeah. and it's I like think, how you doing today who cares yeah <laughs> why I, why are you asking how i'm doing today and i think no, that if you have you know nothing against a ma- an all-male coaching staff but you know there needs to be a female involved in in female sports yeah that's just my personal opinion well, I'm glad glad our club has um through all the drones and workers we have a queen, <laughs> we still we have a we have the queen bee uh, still in center court yeah yes um yeah for me it's because I had a, a the, the it comes from a very personal place because I came down on one of my players a little bit hard and his parent was 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 uh, you know called the program director got all upset um he uh, missed a serve like his fourth and it happened when we were down twenty one twenty two. And I told him just, you know, just tap it in. And, and he just, it, it hit the bottom of the net. And I just, out of frustration, I said, I'll freaking, oh my, I said, oh my God, I'll freaking kill you. Right. So my freaking sounds like, that's yeah. it, first of all, right. Right. Second of all, it's, it's American Sports Center. Right. So the acoustics, I mean, besides having referee whistle PTSD. Right. You know, now people here are, are hearing this guy with a Yankee hat go, go ape, you know, ape shit on someone. And it was, um, it was wrongheaded, and I apologized for it. But they were, you know, the parent was like, "No, this is, you know." But judging by my my reliable sources, this behavior is a pattern, and this and that. And I'm like, um, "No, it's not. My strictness is a pattern. My sarcasm is a pattern." Right. Um, but what I did there was wrong. It was an outburst, and I apologized right. to her. I apologized to the kid, and the kid's like, you know, he was basically echoing his mom because he said ver- verbatim, word for word, what she said when I had the conversation with him. Right. And I said, that's fine. I said, we'll meet in the middle. You know, he right. says, what does meet in the middle mean? I said, because I suspect it wasn't me cursing or allegedly cursing and yelling at you that got you upset. I suspect that my sarcasm upsets you. Right. I, I could have said, said something other than I'll, I'll freaking kill you. Right. Um, um, yeah, which we both know I'm not going to go to his house and commit murder. So, right, just, right, right. so just stop, right? right. I'm not going to commit homicide on it. I'm yeah. Right in your neck. Right. So, um, so I suspected my sarcasm, uh, would have just upset the parents any, or, or the kid. any. Anyway. Right. I could have said, Hey, look, what's how, how big is that court? This is all right. This is my way. And you're going to laugh or you might be upset. This is the way I say, how big is that court? 30 by 30, right? I said, you know, I had an apartment in New York smaller than that, right? <laughs> All, all that real estate, you're going to miss that serve, right? No less on the net. Come on, man. Go sit down. Yeah. You know, so that if that bothers you, right. then me saying I'll freaking kill you right. is not just a straw that broke the camel's back, but like right. this dude's a lunatic, you know? And, and I, I, I'm, I'm not a lunatic. I'm crazy, but I'm not a lunatic. So right. so it's one of those things where I had to just chill or whatever. And this, and that, and, you know, my program director, I'm not going to talk about the conversation we had personally about and who, you know, as far as who supports who or whatever, but my apology was authentic. And it's something where I misdiagnosed this kid because he's this libero that's taken 100 mile an hour shots, you know, and he's competitive. And every time we get a kill, he's amped up, he's whooping up with the kids. Right. And I thought he was a kid that I could talk to and he could just be like, you know, okay, you know, like the right. sarcasm is funny, but, right, right, right. but the, but to me, the sarcasm is not funny because that escalation, right. You know, so we, we squashed it because he had a problem with it. And now, and he's like, I shouldn't talk to the other players like that. And that's why I was like, Hey, what I, what I say to the other players, none of your business. Right. How I talk to that guy and that guy, I'm not your friend. I'm your, I'm the coach. There's no equal treatment here and we don't vote. You know, it's not a democracy. So if you want to continue, accept my apology, we can continue practicing. If you don't, you know, what's your choice? You know? Yeah, and I think I think boys are different too. I think I think I I I personally, when I had boys indoor, I was pretty hard on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was really hard on them. And to make matters worse, uh, we have player of the tournament nominees. He was my player of the tournament, so now me nominating him made it look like I was scared of the parents or I was trying to suck up. I wasn't. (laughs) He he played like a savage. He was amazing. But we're over. It's one of those things you got to get over, right? Except he missed that one serve. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, he missed four. Oh, okay. but uh, and the one, the last, the fourth one was was getting, you know, we're down, we're trying to win here, man. It's like we're going against the number two seed in the tournament, it's, and and I co- I'm coaching my butt off. I made the game twenty one up, or twenty one twenty two. So the re- the other four points, the players, like I mean, when you're you know as a coach, you can't guarantee a win, but you can guarantee seventeen up for Beach. Right. And then the players got to get the last four points. So. Right. But this tournament, he missed a serve, and you know what I said? I said Camden, I said, I'll give you noogies. 
<laughs> and then he started laughing and everyone started laughing so we're over it's just yeah. about just about treatment Good. and how to talk to people so yeah you know and it and it showed that i wasn't gonna no. i wasn't gonna let him not let him know and i said I'll, i said i'll give you noogies that's good because yeah. some of these coaches don't always don't always follow up with that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're continually riding players, and I think you know the mental health issues like it needs to be addressed. Yeah, it's, it's for all sports. For yeah. all sports, all, it's taxing. All sports, yeah, it's taxing, man. I mean, yeah. I mean that's why colleges hire. Yeah, it's like a sports they, psychologist. And, and when you think about it, they're having to go to school. And they're having to do finals. They should have something for them that they do twice a month or something where they can just go and like I don't know what it would be but mm-hmm. something yoga you know something karaoke really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to just to ah, just to me. relax because some of them get really you know intense and they mm-hmm. get really upset and that's why you see kids that don't make it after their first year yeah, you know, they burn out. They burn out. They burn out because, like I said, their escapism becomes their career. They're like, I gotta and, go. I gotta do this for four more years. Yeah. And if you're escape, listen, escapism is nice, but when it becomes this residual thing where it's nothing but that, like I like video games, right? But if if I don't know, so I got I got some friends. They go on twenty four hour binges where I'm like, you didn't leave this room and it's starting to smell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> go 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 do something. <laughs> you know, go do something. And that's oh. and I think sports psychology is uh, psychologists are good and colleges got that covered. But I think the reason why I brought it up is because at the club level, we're not just coaches. We're 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 we are. We're their mentors. We, we're, we are, we're shrinks too. Yeah, we're shrinks too. Mm-hmm. And I I wish that I had gotten a degree in that because. Going back to my Team Wave days, uh-huh. um, Jose Leola and I, you know, we were, we, we, I was his assistant coach, so try that. That was so much fun. Yeah, and um, we, but it, we, we had to put our heads together and go, wow, what are we going to do with this one? Wow, what do we, what do you, I mean, it was like, this is our first year and we're, we're just getting everything thrown at us with the, with the kitchen right. sink. And it was like, oh my God. So mm. you, you come home and you think, God, should I take a psychology? Like, should I enroll now? Yeah. You know, should I, should I enroll now in a psychology class? Yeah. Because some funny, of the things but... that happen, yeah. and you're just like, it's bizarre, especially when you have that many on a team. So, mm-hmm. beach volleyball all the way. Yeah. No when, bench on the beach. When just, man, we're going, wow, we're, we're um, <laughs> I just looked at the time or whatever. And I got to ask this because uh, we, we've been talking for a bit, and, and at some point we got we to gotta wrap up. When, what, when did you start playing? I what? was 25. Are oh, you a late bloomer? I was a real late bloomer. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, my best friend, uh, Tim Kirby, who I worked for at Aetna Finance. My husband, who was the guy that I was married to for 22 and a half years, uh, Jim Forbes. We called him Jimmy. He was on a, away on a business trip. And when he married me, he kind of got rid of all his suits. And so he had to, like, go through all his suits to make sure. He went on a business trip. And he had holes in his suit. And he... Didn't realize it until he was at the airport. And I says, well, I'm going to go to the beach now. And he was mad at me because I told him I was going to the beach to play beach volleyball. I go, no, I'm not going to play beach volleyball. My friend invited me down. I had never played. And I went down, and it was a rec class at in, in uh, Manhattan Beach. And uh, my friend Tim says, you want to play? And I says, I can, how am I going to play? I've never played before. So when my husband got home, we decided that night, If he said, if you want to do it, I'll do it with you. And... Um, he was addicted to volleyball to the day he died. Nice. So we did it together. What a way to go. And what a way to go. We traveled up and down the, the beaches. We went to Estero, played in all the tournaments there, had a, had a great time, made some fabulous friends down there. Um, yeah, beach volleyball. Yeah, man. Wow. Good for you, man. I, yeah, I, um, I don't know. I had a crush on a Dominican girl in high school and. I played every sport. I was like, I'm like one of these long-armed elite athletes. Like, I'm six one, but my wingspan six eight. So I could play football, basketball, baseball. You know, I played bat both sides of the plate. So I'm like volleyball. I could show. I can play this. I could show her I can play. And when, when I played, I got on the court. Now, I want you to Miranda. Miranda plays, and Tony knows the game, and you know the game. I I, I want to describe it, uh, uh, and as an example, away from the sport. You're fishing. Right. Right, you're on a fishing boat. Tony, me, you, you're on a fishing boat, right? And you catch one. You catch. Miranda's like, I got one. She wheels it in, right? It's, and it's a flounder. She it's wheels a big, it in. <laughs> a big old. It's a big old. I said reels it in. It's a, it's a big old flounder. Right. She takes it off the hook. She throws it on the deck, and this flounder's doing this, just flopping because it's in. It's looking for air, and it's just flop. And we're watching this fish just flop all over the air. 
that's how I felt after I left that court. Just a bunch of people that can play, look at me, make a total ass of myself. You know, I hit the net, they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, what? You know, I'm, I'm, I carry the ball on time. I don't even say, carry the ball, lift, throw. That's a lift. No, that's a double. And I'm like, dude, we're not playing technical volleyball. So now, not only am I, am I sucking, but now, now I'm disrespecting the people that put in the time or whatever and had, I had no respect for the sport. So um, a week later, I just forget this volleyball stuff. And a week later, the 88 Olympics was on. You know, Timmons, Karch, or whatever. Right, right, right. Like, so you watch them play and you saw, and okay, I that's said, real volleyball. Don't I feel like the freaking a hole. Yeah. Holy sugar. Oh my God. So. I went to Prospect Park because they have a big Caribbean. At that time, all the all of the Creole players, the Haitian Haitian players, uh, Jamaica, whatever, Creole won nationals right. in '92. Didn't lose a set. Um, one of the can I play? Can I play? No, you're not at our level. Go play on that net. Go play on that net. So over the winter, I bought a book on how to play American Volleyball Coaches ah. Association Handbook. Oh my gosh! Written by Doug Veal and two other coaches, and they showed me what the vertical jump looks like, the, the approach, how to swing your arms, this, and then I bought a second book called Volleyball Rules and Pictures. That was before which I, video. Which I, which I still have. <laughs> well, you you won't even. I mean, you'll find video, but but picture like volleyball p- rules and pictures when th- someone talks about serve receiving with your hands, because back right. then everyone thought you only had to do your forms. It was perfectly legal to receive serve with your hands. You just weren't allowed to double it, and you weren't allowed to carry it. Right. And because it was so difficult, nobody did it. And even if you did, the referees out of instinct would just blow the whistle. Like, right. Then you look at them for the call. It's like <laughs> that one. I'm, I'm going with that one. So I bought this book over the winter. I had a plastic ball in the snow, New York, cold in my backyard, bump into myself. Came back in that spring, a real volleyball player. No one knew who I was. Oh, what, wow. club, what club did you train with, or who who is your coach, and this and that? I I bought a book and I coached you myself. You were book smart. Six months later. Um, I got people inviting me to Junior Olympics for this club and this and that. So and then a year later, I joined the Army, then got in great physical shape. And then um, um, a year after that, I was playing professionally. I was playing in Germany. And wow. And I hit her up. So three years in. Um, again, I was a, a lead athlete that could play. That was on my way to play one of the big three. Right, right. Um, and this sport just embarrassed me. And I, I didn't even think. I don't even remember the girl's name. <laughs> I don't even remember her name. She probably wasn't even that good looking anyway. You know, I was a softball player growing mm-hmm. up, so um, beach volleyball was totally foreign in the sand. But as soon as I mm-hmm. as soon as I stepped on the beach, volleyball bikinis, guys everywhere. You know, I was twenty five years old, and yeah. it was just like, wow, this is this is great. So and it's beach, right? Everyone's literally in shape. They're literally beach. half naked and in yeah, shape. Yeah, it was great. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was addicted. I was like, I was all in. I was like, all in. So, yeah, yep. That's like Miranda. Like, uh, I, I see Miranda. She got, she got like her 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 little glasses on, looking like the librarian. But because she works out on the beach, she looks like a freaky librarian. You know, <laughs> one, of the, one of those people when like the library's closed and. She's maybe maybe she sees like a pole holding up a bookshelf. <laughs> turns, on, turns on the music. <laughs> I'm busting out my tech person. <laughs> oh. oh man! I, wow! And conveniently, I think before I go really off the deep end, maybe we leave it at that. <laughs> did uh, Did Bobby Jones chime in? Did he? He did. What did he, he say? He didn't say anything. He was just watching. Oh, he's one of our affiliates too, and over in Austin. Let's let's call him out, Project Serve. Right? Yeah, let's, he's let's, great. Let's, let's give him a plug, Project yeah. Serve. Um, met him in New York. Did you? He had a full-blown Lenny Kravitz afro. Oh, yeah. And I had a blonde afro at the time. I so had did you guys a, take a selfie? Um, we took a picture. Well, there's definitely a picture out there with the both of us together. He's oh, modeling God. at the time. So um, I said, hey, why don't you come to my birthday? My birthday is whatever. And this and I, he's like, no, nah, I got something to do. And so it turned out where I was having my birthday, Solas. This is a Greenwich Village right. on 9th Street. He was staying in an apartment on the second floor. So he just heard the music and then he uh, heard people singing. And he came downstairs, and he's like, oh, I, man, if, you're, if I knew your birthday was here, I would have come. So he just came downstairs. It turns out he can sing. Oh, he can uh, sing. He, he can dance. Yeah, he, he, he's um, very charismatic. He's so, and... so cool, man. Yeah. So Bobby Bobby Jones, before we get out of here, we're, we're going to wrap yeah. up. But big plug up. Big plug in to Bobby Jones. Big plug in to De- uh, Matt Olson. Since we're talking about beach volleyball and since we're talking about club, Matty O from Wave, right? Talk uh, Big up to... Um, uh, Derek Olson, who's uh, who's uh, who's coaching at Cal, big up to um, just the family. John Mayer, um, who um, gave me my opportunity at, at Loyola Marymount University. So the three, one of the three people I'm eternally grateful for, just as 
definitely one of them. I, I met you on the beach. We chatted about volleyball. You asked me if I had a resume, and and then you gave me Georgia. You gave me those girls the first day, and you and you loved it. Oh yeah, yeah Georgia, yeah. yeah Georgia. That's when I had, girls, I had yeah. everybody waiting the plank until she shagged or something. Yeah, like that. you're like, come on. Like, yeah, it was, that's a story I tell all the time. That's yeah. Um, so well, let me give a shout out to all our affiliates before before we Please, end yeah, here. I've got a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, first of all, the affiliates have been doing a really good job. They're awesome. They're amazing. We are accepting uh, new messages for some new affiliates. We do want to expand. Um, Nate Yang, he is in Colorado. He was our first affiliate. Nate actually coached for me at Endless Summer. So he was he was a great was one. Awesome. Yeah, he was a great one to get on board first. A very in, you know energetic. Um, we've got a Florida Beach Volleyball Tour at Pompano Beach. Great location. People are calling me saying, Duran, how can you be in Florida, Arizona, and Santa Monica in the same weekend? I'm like, think about it. It it can't happen because no. I was at I was at I went to go back to see Presley in Florida, so I stopped at Pompano Beach, stopped at the beach, got selfies with everybody, took pictures, talked to the kids, went to go see Presley play, flew back home, had a tournament on Sunday, and then that Sunday there was a tournament in Arizona. I'm like, oh, maybe I could, maybe I could make Arizona and then still come back to Santa Monica, but it would be really hard. Um, so and then we have um, Project U. Um, which is a floater. So he floats around and he does tournaments kind of all over the United States, he even does tournaments in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. So um, if you get if you get an exclusive, there will be a clause in there for Project U. Um, who else we have? We have Austin Juniors. And um, Austin Juniors, they're in Austin. They're, they're connected to a really big club and we're very excited. All their events are up. We have the Sand Club. Who am I missing? Am I missing anybody? Active right now, I think you've got it all. Did I get it all? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they ask you how you can be everywhere. The answer is um, um, Duran Forbes and Beach Volleyball National Events is no longer a person; it's an entity. So once you become an entity, you're everywhere. I try to be. Yeah. You, yeah. And, and you are. Yeah. Let me tell you something. For a girl who just had knee surgery, you're in more places. You're in more places right now than I am fully healthy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think anybody really knows that I had knee surgery, and it, it's it's pretty painful. It's pretty excruciating. Mm. Just going to get out of bed to go to the restroom has been my exercise. Um, mm. So that's been really hard. And I know you want to close this, but before we Please. close, um, since important. we're since we're talking about beach volleyball, and um, I, I'd like to I'd like to ask our volleyball community for some more transparency transparencies especially at the um abca level um we don't need to vote on all americans it should be it should just be based on your wins meritocracy yeah yeah and it should be that simple because when you're when you're it's for indoor we don't vote on who who had the most who had the best who had the most serves who was the ace you know leader who was the best player of the week there's no vote on that it's based all on stats yeah. And I think that should also happen for the Beach All-American Award. There should be no committee. Um, first, first and foremost, right now, uh, you know, if you're voting for your own players, that should not happen. So um, if, yeah. I can, if I can close anything out on that note, I'd like to see uh, our beach volleyball to have some more transparencies in it. I'll chime in and say this. Okay. As far as individual players are concerned, mm -hmm. pure meritocracy, stats. And, and that that's it. It's, right. uh, I'll use football as an example. Like okay. Mike Tomlin, who's the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sure. Um, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, so big up. We got you. Sorry. This man lost Ben Roethlisberger. He lost uh, um, Le'Veon Bell. He lost um, Antonio Brown, wherever the hell he is. Uh, lost Connor. Juju Smith-Schuster, concussion protocol. And somehow this he's eight and six. So as a coach... That's you, that's that's you're not looking at stats. You're looking at someone doing more with less. But with that being said, that's a coach and players. The person coming up with the numbers. It's got to be Lamar, you know, like Lamar Jackson is the MVP. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's where I think the rubber meets the road between coaches or who, who you think uh, is just is just working hard and, or who or who's just just putting up. But those how numbers did he get that MVP? That is it because he had stats. so many? It's stats. Just like and you said, the work. That's what we. That, that it's yeah. it's very very simple stats. So he leads his team in rushing, and he's a quarterback. Okay, he th he's has more touchdowns, less interceptions, and he has the best win loss record in it. Leading a team with the best win loss record. So these are some numbers for you for you know I mean the numbers for you for for yourself. So yeah yeah so, I agree. So basically, hands down, stats. That's that's all I'm looking for. So I'm not going to be able to be at the the uh, college coaches convention this year. If I was, I'd be. Uh, 
I'd be I'd be poking around at that one. In the meantime, I'll have to send some emails because I think it's really important. I think the juniors, uh, the girls are out there. My girls are out there working hard. I want to nominate them. I don't think it should be a nomination. I think we should just send their names in. And if they have the highest stats, whoever has the st highest stats gets the Beach All-American Award. Because yeah. if, if you can't, you, and you have to be able to prove the stats is the other thing. Yeah. You can't say that, oh, they played in these three tournaments, but you can't find those tournaments anywhere. So oh, the yeah. stats have to be, they have to be, you know, verified. There has to be some validity to it. So, yeah. Um, but you, you do see the problem though, right? You, oh yeah. You're not, you're not gonna you're gonna see stats, but you're also gonna look at tournaments. The de the degree of difficulty for the tournaments, you know, like college football. Clemson is the reigning defending champion, right? And they're, and they're coming in the tournament as a number three seed. They haven't lost in in, in two and a half years. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but they're like, oh, that's the ACC. It's not the SEC. So, that, well, so there's the problem you might run into well, as well. For for example, the um, ABCA had a list of tournaments, a list of five tournaments that the girls, if they played oh, in God. them and they placed high in them, they would hold that to the highest regard. I like it. That's it, did, it. But that didn't work. It still didn't work. Girls, girls were still making it that didn't have any of those wins. Yeah, I don't love that. So stats is what it needs to boil down to. So mm -hmm. if anybody's out there, if anybody's listening, um, you know, anybody who has more, more, more girl power than me, Holly McPeak, um, uh, Anna Collier, Mike and Patty. Yeah. Mike yeah. and Patty help me out here. We, we need to have some, some clarity mm -hmm. and some transparency in our volleyball community. Listen, we all, we all want to work. We all want to have our own clubs. We all want it to be fair. I support you guys. I support your kids coming to my tournaments. I always post everybody's photos. I never, ever, because it's a fine line with me. That's the other thing I want to talk about real quickly is it's a real fine line between having beach volleyball national events and get notice college recruiting showcase. Right. Um, which is, which is the all showcases now will be ran under get notice beach volleyball and having a club. It's a very fine line that I, that I run. And the one thing that I do not do is I never, ever, solicit players to come to my club if you find out who i am and you want to come to my club you come on you know on your own free will i never there's not a person out there that can tell you that i've ever solicited them you you do leave, you do a magnificent job of to leave their club to come yeah. to mine because i support everybody in our ecosystem because yeah. if we don't support everybody we have nothing yeah and unity is the most important thing in a sport yeah. that's, uh, that's been up and down and you know it's ascending it's descending and um yeah we can't be sawing each other out like that yep yep all right hey that is it oh my god i can't believe we covered so much and that that's that was only half of this laundry launch no we didn't of course we not didn't? we got to do it at some other point where okay we can, well listen it's more fun to talk to because those other subjects might change too and, okay and, and even the things we talked about now are are, are, are are could change you know okay so um I want to thank uh, Miranda, of course. It's Miranda's, I mean, I always have a bunch of guest people tech in, Jeff Samuels, uh, Spencer Isley, but Miranda is, is that's my main girl. So I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so glad you're back training too. You're, yeah. you're back on the court training. Um, uh, stay stay um, tuned for a promotion Miranda and Rob are going to do. Um, I'm doing a, a, a AVP P1440 30-second clip. Um, um, AVP P1440. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a clip where basically... Uh, all of the gear, like the AVP bar, oh, the, the okay. P forty forty bag, the whatever, um, where they both have gear and they're just done training. They leave the beach together, so it's gonna be like Al Green, you know, Al Green's let's stay together. Oh. So at the end, I'm gonna caption it, let's play together. Right. So because you just talk, I like you it. just talked about unity, and that's why that I don't yeah. even know why I'm I'm just it doesn't it yeah. doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What matters is that we're all in it together and we're all playing or we're all doing something. All right. and also, before we go, Barefoot Jr. said, find someone to build me 10 sand courts and I will join you, D. <laughs> and, and where and where are you, Barefoot Juniors? Um, oh, we'll, we'll talk after this. I think we've talked before. Yeah, they're they're yeah. they're big. They're big now and they're, they're everywhere. And I've, I've talked to a couple a couple of their people and you know me. I don't even care where you're from. I just I just care if you're a good human being. Right. So I remember good human beings. So right. Right. I remember them. All right. With that being said, for Tony, who's a, our tech guy was in the back and for Duran Forbes. Thank you for coming. I am Jason DeBase and I say. We're out. Bye. Yes. Yes. You got the bye at the end. Did she? she? At the end. Did I?